I'm sorry, guys. Am I late for the party? We were just about to call for backup. Oh, what a mess. Lead the way. We'll be right behind you. These guys sure know how to mess up the place. Heads up, boss. Spider sense tingling. Something's going on here. Enough with the shooting already! You guys aren't ugly enough to be Venom's kids. Note to self, hire more handsome henchmen. Anyways, welcome back True Believers and spectacular Spidey fans to another infectious installment of Raid Active Review. Now, I know it's been a while since I did my last Raid Active Review, everybody, but this one is actually going to be a bit more special than the others. And the main reason why that is is because I'm going to be reviewing Spider-Man 2000 and Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro in the same video. And huge shout out to fellow awesome Spidey Squad member Blasty Games for actually giving me this idea. Now, in the past, I've mainly always reviewed one game at a time because I I want to fully break down what each game offers, but the thing is, with these two, they're pretty much almost identical to each other. The only difference is, is that Enter Electro has slightly better graphics, more combos, and different web varieties, along with a different story. But other than that, these games are pretty much the exact same thing, and that's not a bad thing either. Both of these games have very unique traits attached to them, but in this video, we are just going to be breaking down both of them simultaneously. But just like any other review I've done in the past, this one is going to be no different because we are going to break down the game's story, gameplay, graphics, soundtrack, some pros, cons, my best moment, worst moment of each game, and then end it with my final score. But before we begin, huge shout out to the one and only Ricky Franklin for being awesome enough to help me with all the incredible thumbnail logos that you see in each episode. And without further ado, to begin the review, we are going to be discussing about the story for each of these games. Now, even though each game is tailored with different villains attached to the game's narrative, the main plot point is basically the same. Basically, the majority of Spider-Man's villains are out causing havoc throughout the city, and it's your job as Spider-Man to put them in their place. And even though you endure lots of levels in both of these games, the main story is basically the same. Stop the bad guys and save the day. And frankly, that's one of my most favorite parts about both of these games. These games have the type of stories that I grew up with as a kid that made me fall in love with Spider-Man in the first place. And to summarize both of these games' narratives, they definitely make you feel like your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And even though you will encounter some twists and turns here and there, both of these games' stories have very straightforward plots, which is very appreciated. And overall, both of these games' narratives are just one heck of a fun time. Now moving on to the next point of the review is basically something that we don't have to talk about that much, which is of course the graphics. Given the years of 2000 and 2001, along with the technology that both Neversoft and Vicarious Visions had to work with, I would say that they definitely provide a really good looking Spider-Man game for the time. All of the character models were very well detailed for the time and with the technology that both companies had to work with. Plus throughout both games, you'll definitely experience some very well rendered and textured areas that Spider-Man will explore in. But once again, this isn't a topic that we have to discuss about that much because these are just both some classic Spider-Man games on some very classic platforms. And like I said earlier, given what both developers had to work with, I think the games both look visually very appealing. And seeing how these are some of the very first ever 3D Spider-Man games, you can definitely tell that Vicarious Visions and Neversoft put as much detail as they possibly could in both games. But moving on to one of my most favorite aspects about both of these games is of course the incredible soundtrack that comes along with them. Now when you first hear these games' soundtrack, the best way to describe both of them is simply that they are basic video game music. But when you take time to actually listen to them a bit deeper, you'll actually discover lots of layers that each soundtrack comes with. You see, the music for Neversoft Spider-Man was a very early grunge rock soundtrack, whereas Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro had a very techno-based score. And along with both of these soundtracks having very well-detailed theme songs for each villain that came on during the game's boss battles, it really shows how much detail that the soundtrack had for both games. And given all the nostalgia that I feel for both of these games, easily my favorite part about both of them is the amazing soundtrack that they both have. So moving on, we are going into the pros and cons list of this review. Now in my personal opinion, there are very few cons when it comes to both of these games, but I still feel like they need to be addressed regardless. And the very first con that I have for both of these games is that they do not have an upgrade system. Now granted, these were some very early made Spider-Man games, so the entire upgrade system wasn't really a thing back then, but I still wish that that feature was somehow implemented within both games. And even though it's not a deal breaker to not have an upgrade system, within either game, it would have been nice to see it nonetheless. But moving on to the very last con on this list regarding both games is actually relating to the game's camera system. Now both games do come with the look around mode feature which does allow Spidey to try and look around the area and shoot a web line at something in order to be more precise. But when it comes to freely moving the camera with the right stick, that doesn't seem to be the case for both of these games. And like I said earlier, these are some of the very first 3D Spider-Man games ever created so the camera system wasn't fully implemented back then. And even though look around 
turnaround mode is a nice feature to have. It would have been nice to have a freely moving camera with the right stick. This is primarily a problem during the boss fights of the game where you could get stuck at a certain area not knowing where to fully look at where you're fighting these enemies or be lost in the certain area that you're exploring in. And even though those were some very short cons on the list, we are moving on of course to the amazing pros that both of these games have. And the first pro on the list has to go to the incredible voice cast that both games feature. In my opinion, Rino Romano is one of the most talented voice actors that we've ever had to voice Spider-Man. Plus all the other very talented voice actors like Jennifer Hale, Dee Bradley Baker, Darren Norris, and more voicing all the characters and villains in the game did a phenomenal job. And given how lively each individual voice actor sounded during their role really gives personality to each character that is featured within both games. And I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for some of the voice actors within both games, I don't think I would have enjoyed them just as much as I do. And seeing how some of the Spider-Man cartoons out there like the Spectacular Spider-Man actually brought back some of these voice actors just show what a great job they did in both of these games. And moving on to the second pro of the list is all the incredible level variety that both games feature. Not only is each game a well-made Spider-Man adventure, but every level that you go into for both games is completely different in every single way possible. This can range from saving some hostages in a bank to chasing Venom through the sewers through also fighting symbiotes in the Daily Bugle and also escaping from Monster Rock in an underwater lab. And alongside of that, some of the levels even include puzzles to make it more challenging for the player. So knowing that the majority of the levels from both games really feature this amount of scale really makes each level feel like its own unique experience. And for me personally, some of my favorite levels from both of these games would have to be all the levels including Venom from the first game and all the train yard levels from the second game. And relating to another pro that revolves around the levels is actually the web varieties that you can access during each part of the games. Now primarily in the first game, there were spider tokens located throughout certain sections of the map that allowed you to have fire webbing to take out the symbiotes. Whereas in the second game, Vicarious Visions up the ante by providing the player with electric webbing and freeze webbing. And while it may not make any sense for Spidey's web shooters to pull this off, I just love the amount of detail that they added within the different web types that are in both games. And while there was no real need to add these types of features in the game in the first place, it's just really enjoyable to see them in there regardless. And rounding up to my final pro on the list is all the awesome cameos that are in both games. Now Enter Electro turned this down a bit by just referencing characters in newspapers like Ghost Rider, Iron Man, or even Thor, but mainly in the first game they actually had roles in parts of the story. And I just love the way on how Neversoft actually incorporated these other Marvel heroes within the main game while still maintaining its main Spidey priority. For example, even though Daredevil, the Human Torch, Punisher, and Captain America all show up in the first game, none of the attention is taken away from Spider-Man. Throughout the entirety of Neversoft's game, Spider-Man was always at the forefront of the game's story. But the fact that Neversoft actually incorporated these heroes in the game regardless really shows that this was indeed a really big Marvel universe. Plus, seeing Spider-Man interact with all these heroes in the game is just awesome. Now, with all the pros and cons out of the way, everyone, we are moving on to the worst moment and the best moments of the game. And the only worst moment that I have for both of these games is that they are both incredibly short. Like I said earlier, these are some of the very first 3D Spider-Man games, but even though they focused on lots of great gameplay mechanics and a really fun story, the length of the game isn't that long. And even though both of these games were great in their own way, it's really sad to see these stories be cut so short. But in all honesty, that's the only bad thing I can say about both these games. Whereas now moving on to the best moments of this list actually relate to two aspects of both games. And my first best moment of both these games are all the incredible boss battles. I will say it right here right now that given what the developers had to work with at the time, these are some really great boss fights. Each boss fight was unique in its own way and you had to come up with a different strategy to take each of them out. Plus some of these settings where these boss battles were located were really fun to fight in like the Daily Bugle, underneath the sewers in New York City, and even a science lab. Plus the dialogue that Reno Romano delivers as Spider-Man while fighting all these boss fights makes it even more entertaining. And moving on to my final best moment for Neversoft Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro are both of their amazing narratives. Once again, even though they do seem like very simple Spider-Man stories, that's the best type of story that you can possibly do. Of course it's fun while playing different levels of each game to just beat up bad guys, but my favorite part about it is just seeing how interactive Spider-Man is for the story. Once again, both of these stories really show what it means to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and just him saving the day at the end of both games really makes it worthwhile. And with all that out of the way, everyone, we are going into the last part of this review is giving both games my final score, and I am going to give both Neversoft Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro a solid 9 out of 10. Given everything that Neversoft and Vicarious Visions had to work with back in the early days, I'm actually blown away that they were able to make some amazing games with what they had. And in my opinion, these are some of the best Spider-Man games to ever be created. But anyways, guys, that was my radioactive review for both Neversoft Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below, and what do you think about both these games? Do you 
you like both of these games, and which one do you prefer more, Spider-Man 2000 or Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro? In my opinion, I prefer Spider-Man 2000 over Enter Electro, but I will say that Enter Electro is a bit more challenging for the hardcore players. But with all that said, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Stay spectacular, Spidey fans. Peace out. Um... Peter, are you in trouble? Do you need money? No, no I mean, I mean, I'm a little behind on my rent, but no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine.